Alright guys, Cedric will be here back again today. A couple of big things to discuss. Over the last couple of days or so, COD Mobile has launched, in addition to a few things related to actual competitive play for the upcoming CDL 2020 season. We're going to get into that today, of course, as always. I like if you guys enjoy the video, subscribe if you are new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. And to start off with here, I wanted to share this clip with you from the new COD Mobile game. Very similar to if you guys are aware of COD Online, which is um, a game that I believe you can only... You can only play in China. I think you can probably play it if you use a VPN and you say you're in China. It's kind of like a COD game, like a, how would you say? Basically a best of Call of Duty. So they take the best weapons, the intervention, the MSMCs, like the AN-94s, I don't know, all the best guns from COD history, put them all on all the best maps, and then you have a game which is kind of, instead of having an individual COD every year, COD Online is kind of just COD as, uh, as it is. You have Rust for Modern Warfare 2, all the games combined together in the best maps. This clip I'm about to show you is very similar from COD Online. I believe Testy here is using the Intervention, playing on Standoff, of course, a gun that was in Modern Warfare 2 on a map that was in Black Ops 2, and um, the streaks are different across games. And look, this is played on a phone, and um, honestly, a lot of people are saying that they've had more fun playing this than they have like the past three CODs, uh, which is what Testy says here, and a lot of people echo the statement. Roll the clip. On standby. We captured C. Predator missile on standby. Capturing B. Enemy down! Tango down! Changing mag, cover me! Target down! Capturing C. I'm hurt! Enemy All down! Locked down. All Tango down! Capturing Charlie. Enemy down! Tied for the lead. Awaiting orders. We're capturing Bravo. We're capturing. So I thought it looked really, really good. It's kind of funny that you can actually, I think on iOS, you can plug your controller into your phone if you want it. Um, and even people were talking about on Reddit, imagine if you could have some sort of like um, mobile COD league where you'd have an iPad Pro and you get all the pros playing on that with their, with their console, with their controllers out rather, and playing on the best of Call of Duty, right? And the crazy thing about this, genuinely shocking to me, is that JP says here, COD Mobile has a ranked playlist on day one of launch. Now let's not get ahead of ourselves, having a ranked playlist on day one might not necessarily be the best thing, given that, you know, you don't know what maps are necessarily going to be in competitive, if we did this have, of course it makes sense on COD Mobile when you know what maps are going to be the maps for competitive kind of thing, when they're all past COD maps. Going into a new game, you don't want a ranked playlist maybe immediately, you want to give it maybe a couple of weeks. But still, given what we've heard from the Infinity Ward developers for this coming Modern Warfare game, saying that, you know, they're not really, they don't think they're going to be able to get a ranked playlist on launch. They didn't say that was going to be possible in an interview that came out maybe a month or so ago, and they weren't really implying that it was going to be very near launch. Of course, in Black Ops 4, crazy scenes when we had CWL Vegas, so many viewers, and yet with the perfect opportunity to drop ranked play and uh, you know, secure some of those viewers that just watch Vegas to come in and play the game, they delayed it, they delayed it, it took until February to get an actual ranked playlist in Black Ops 4. COD Mobile has it day one, like, what is going on guys? Uh, it's truly crazy scenes. So just to touch on the current rumors we are seeing, I'll just let you guys pause the video if you want to. I'm sure a lot of you guys watched yesterday's video and the day before, so I don't want to bore you with going over content I've already gone over. But of course, this is the key thing right now, Rostermania rumors. So you can pause the video if you guys haven't seen what's on screen right now. And these are the full rumored rosters. And, um, you know, as I've said before, the New York team and London team are now confirmed. Pretty interesting stuff here, given that um, we don't know whether Reciprocity just couldn't invest into the CDL or were, you know, asked not to to invest or whatever the case may be but pretty interesting stuff comes out from Chad Larson here the CEO saying there's 52 
thousand square foot esports facility that LGD Gaming owns is unmatched. So excited to be working with this organization. So really cool stuff with Reciprocity. I'm going to continue following this organization in other esports. Hopefully one day they can get involved with Call of Duty. And this kind of leads on rather nicely to this tweet from Adam Fitch saying the Call of Duty League is being completely rushed. Everything I'm hearing points towards it being messy for all involved. Not the best of starts. I'm criticizing the league from a place of love for what it's worth. COD4 is my favorite game of all time and the reason I discovered esports. So he does expand on this in a um, Reddit post. He mentions right here, let's just make sure this is fully on screen. This wasn't an attempted journalism. So replying to some other comments because obviously a lot of people see a tweet like this and it's saying, well, at least give us some details or why would you even tweet this? To some degree, it, um, it kind of does spark up that emotion. But at the same time, Adam Fitch is not really in a position, UK Sports Reporter of the Year, to comment on these things. So as he says here, when things are vague, it's perhaps because the person isn't in the position to officially report on this, either to protect sources or because they're working on something larger. These are the three things he mentions though. It was only recently decided to cap the amount of franchises at 12. There was talk of 16 franchises for year one for a long while. So this is kind of something that we all kind of knew, but we weren't really sure whether they were considering 16 franchises. We did hear rumors either way, and then they locked at 12. So of course, maybe potential owners wouldn't be happy with that. Um, so of course, I think Reciprocity came out the race earlier on, but if they were still in the race, then maybe that'd be something to consider. The low effort underwhelming announcement post is something that is a fair point. Um, this isn't really on the lead it's more on the organizations and the individuals there but yeah at the same time these franchises aren't built out yet they're not prepared for anything substantial there's um there's no doubt with that especially looking at an organization like london for example organizational staff who'd be working on these franchises didn't even know they had a franchise until it was officially reported on which is honestly crazy scenes um and hopefully we'll get some expansion maybe from adam or from some other individuals in the coming days thought i'd share this fun little tweet right here if you guys are aware of this whole thing going on with six this whole like court thing that's going on and um yeah i thought this is a pretty funny tweet from kfc i thought i'd run it past you guys a little bit of a light-hearted middle to the video before we get on to this dallas empire thing i just wanted to mention this real quick from claystra machine replies to it ain't nobody else was switching up specialists on a map by map basis last year i thought it was always interesting how claystra has always been this guy who um always tries to break the meta right i think in world war ii i forget what gun he used that was not allowed to be used and whatever and he had to apologize or give people's money back or something I forget what gun it was. I really should be remembering that. I'm sure you guys, some of you guys below will remember what I'm talking about here in the World War II season. But he always tries different guns, tries to switch things up. And I thought this is interesting mentioning switching specialists up on a map-by-map -map basis, giving things, uh, giving people little advantages, which um, Glacier always tends to be really good at. That's why if you guys are Dallas fans or Crimsix fans or Huke fans or Illy fans or Shotzi fans or whoever's going to be on that team, you should be pretty excited about the prospect of having Clay on your team for the upcoming season, especially given the amount of uh, variety we have in this game with the attachments you can use on all of that i'm sure clay will be experimenting very very deeply with all of it which is um always appreciated in a cod player so let's move on here we've had a couple of um not confirmations but rumors so far of what teams we're going to be looking at team names for next season if you guys aren't aware how franchising works it works effectively like a typical american sports league you have an ownership for the organization and then you have another brand which uh, the, the players play for and this needs to be separate from the actual organization itself because otherwise if the ownership were to change but the brand lives on you can't have the old ownership being in some way related with that brand so it needs to be different which is why it's city based which is why the name the dallas empire as is rumored is nothing like the dallas envious or um or whatever could be possible Anyway, a couple of rumours. The London Ravens, the Los Angeles Gorillas are rumoured so far. The Dallas Empire and uh, the Toronto Ultra as well was one I was forgetting. So these are the rumours so far. This is what's happened. So uh, the Dallas Empire GG um, domain has been taken. And if you look it up, you can find this ownership by Envy Gaming Incorporated. So Dallas Empire potentially looking likely. Then if you dig a little bit further here, there's also another few um, domains owned by Envy Gaming Incorporated. So Dallas COD, DallasCod.org, Dallas Envy, Dallas Fuel Overwatch, which is their um, Overwatch League team, Dallas Republic. So not necessarily it'll be Dallas Empire. Empire hasn't been confirmed yet, but there's probably a reason why Crone came out and said this first, um, with only one exclamation mark. So maybe uh, pretty damn, pretty damn confident in this potentially. So these are the other rumors. Thought this is pretty interesting. Wanted to know what you guys thought of this name because. 
It's an interesting name. I'm not sure whether... I think it's quite good that the whole concept of an empire is a little bit interesting. I kind of like the way they're going, though, with the empire kind of um, expanding beyond the borders theme, because I think a lot of what's been said from Hastro and from Hector, of course, two of the biggest names in Call of Duty, at least uh, for managing the organizations, have said that they really want their brand to be global, right? They don't want the brand to be stuck within the one organization. We don't exactly know what the Chicago team is going to be called yet, but Maybe it will go along a similar lines because we know the Hex, we know the Hastray have been around Call of Duty for a long time, and they're not necessarily the biggest fans of this city-based localization thing. Because yes, localizing has its benefits to some degree, but also if you want to be a world-renowned, well-respected global organization, you don't really want to have fans in the UK or whatever having to support Chicago when they could just be supporting Lon London, which might happen to be their local team. Now, of course, that has a benefit and a cost, right? Because if you are in London, you might have a vested interest to support the London team rather than whatever splice or something that may have UK players but you may feel more affinity to the optic players that got you into Call of Duty for example whereas now you may feel like you have more affinity to London than you do to Chicago or NRG because of the city-based nature of it so there's obviously pros and cons if you live in the UK then maybe from Activision's perspective the fact that you might be more inclined to be a London fan is a pretty big deal but I'm sure for Chicago and I'm sure for Dallas a lot of these organizations, they want to be seen as a global brand still. They don't want to... Uh you know, don't want to show any signs that they're trying to be limited. Yes, they're based in a city, they're kind of called after a city, but that's just um, the way Activision are running things. In an ideal world, they don't want to be in that position, so I think the idea of an empire kind of makes sense here, kind of in implying they're breaching out, they're branching out, they're available for you to be fans of anywhere in the world. So I don't mind it, I think the, the concept of an empire is always, um, it's a little bit controversial maybe to some degree, but um, I kind of like the name on the whole, it's kind of catchy, too syllables love to see it so before we finish the video here this tweet from hastro so just to follow up with where we registered multiple team names domains and branding assets for our call of duty esports team you guys can keep speculating just know that our launch will be pretty epic so this is what um hastro comes out with of course ceo of envy and um you know team owner and ceo of envy dallas fuel and cod dallas which of course is yet to be named potentially going to be named the dallas empire maybe having this been leaked they might change their mind. Uh, of course, they do have Dallas Republic, for example, which again is along similar lines as well. So maybe, as uh, as Hastro says here, they have you know owned both of these domain names, and therefore they're going to keep considering, or they thought one's better than the other. And maybe um, maybe this was even leaked deliberately so that they can get some community reaction onto what people would prefer. Bit of speculation, bit of conspiracy theories. Not saying I believe it, but uh, the thought just came to mind, so I thought I'd mention it anyway. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new. As always, I would greatly appreciate it thanks for all the support lately um content's been doing great videos have been doing really really well it's been difficult to keep daily videos at the current time there's not too much to talk about but we're doing our best and um, i know a lot of you guys are enjoying it because i get comments every day saying you are and um, that really does mean a lot so thanks very much for watching as always and um, i will see you next time